Well, hello everyone and welcome back to Crowley House. This week we are planting and planting and planting. We've planted out a ton more ranunculus anemones and now I'm on to sweet peas. So I thought I would take you along as we get our sweet pea season started. And this is for our outdoor crop. We have an indoor crop that's already going. We planted that back in late summer, early fall. And um, that one's going because it's under this protected hoop house. But for our production, that's going to be outside I'm going to be planting around six to eight hundred seeds that are going to go outdoors this crop is something that is a staple here on the farm and we've been growing it for over I want to say 13 years it's something that we've honed in on and have learned to be able to cut and to produce and it's just uh, we have multiple ways of using it so it pays for itself here on our farm sometimes people People find that growing sweet peas maybe the dollars don't add up for them but um, for us here on our farm it does and so we grow them and also because they are so nostalgic a lot of people just really hone in on sweet peas if they're in a bouquet and we use them in our mixed bouquets as a foliage slash filler flower so anyways I thought I would take you along as I seed start those sweet peas and kind of give you some tips and tricks on growing sweet peas and then I also thought to um, ramble just a little bit more since I've been doing that lately just on a few key thoughts that I've uh, learned over the 14 plus years of commercial growing um, just to keep a healthy successful mindset as the year is starting in and you know I'm not a hundred percent on this healthy mindset all year round I think when it comes to August September you kind of tend to wilt <laughs> And that healthy mindset kind of goes out the door and it's always a good reminder at that point to take some sort of, you know, respite, whether it is setting some time away to get to the beach or do something with the family, even though the it's just so hectic and full, we tend to do that now and it's, it's okay. Anyways, I'm rambling already. See? Okay. So what I'm going to do is I have about, I'm seeding my sweet peas into 72 cell trays. So a lot of times they tell you to put them into like what's called a root trainer. Um, it's just longer, growing space so it's a taller basically growing pot or in my case cell trays but I don't do that uh, I haven't for many years and um, one thing it's just a specialty thing that has anything that has a long tap root you would use them for and sweet peas definitely have a long tap root and you don't want to disturb that when you're transplanting we don't let ours get that big so we actually just get them going pretty quickly into the 72 cell trays and then we pop them out into the field so it's just a timing thing basically and I've never ever had an issue so I don't know if you have those taller cell trays, um, the root trainers, go for it. Um, I don't have them, so I'm not doing it. Anyways, I'm gonna I'm gonna fill about eight of these with a growing medium. The growing medium does not have any fertilizer or anything in it. It's just a regular growing medium that we get from. A, it's a nursery supply store, so they carry these big bales in bulk, and they're just amazing for starting seed. We also have a seed starting mix, but for sweet peas, I am just using their general potting soil and I will show you what that is because you can order this 
online and get it in your area as well and i i hands down love this it doesn't have too much bark chip in it it's not you know too sandy or it's just perfect so and you could make your own if you wanted to if you're at the scale that i'm at i kind of tip both ways because i'm not like a huge mass grower i'm just kind of like a mediocre grower but this has the right perlite in it and just the right combination so it's really easy for me to do i think the bales run around 35 dollars or something like that so so i'm just going to fill my trays up really fast and then i'm going to show you the varieties that i'm growing and talk about growing successful sweet peas and being having a healthy mindset and uh, successful in your growing season whether it's for your garden or for your farm so so some people like to what they call chit the seed so sweet peas kind of have this like hard i don't know if it will focus hard surface on the outside and so you can take like a fingernail file and actually kind of scuff the surface of it and that will allow the seed to germinate a little bit faster but i have never done that because if you can imagine you know we seed almost a thousand sweet peas a year that's a lot of work but if you're a home gardener and want to give it a whirl i would suggest trying it um, I've just had really good luck with germinating just straight in water for 24 hours and then going from there. Um, the other thing people have been known to do is you can take like a plate inside and you know maybe you're only germinating 10 seeds or 20 seeds. You can put a paper towel down, put your seeds on the towel, cover it so the seeds are between the layer of the towels. I'm not explaining that very well, but then you just put water on it and you just watch it every day to make sure it stays nice and moist and they'll germinate that way. And that way you can see like your germination rate, whether or not something is not sprouting at all and maybe you do need to give it a little loving and finger, fingernail file it off a little bit to see if it will um, break through that hard outer shell. Okay, so I've got my first tray done and I've got eight more to go. I'm just giving them a quick cover up and we will continue on. So we have a big storm. I think most of the United States is kind of going through this winter storm kind of thing. And so here at our farm, we're supposed to get some ice or snow tonight and tomorrow, which we don't get very often, but we're supposed to get cold the next couple days. So um, I've been kind of watching the storm clouds roll in and out and the weather systems. We had some, you know, kind of hail and things like that. Uh, very, very winter like storms. But today it's kind of mild at the moment. There's nothing going on. So this is a great day for me to get into the greenhouse. Otherwise, I can't really talk to you in here if it's raining. It's really, really loud. Anyways, I thought I would talk to you a little bit about something else that I've been thinking about as far as gardeners go. I think um, over the years, I've come to realize that, you know, I can be really, really hard on myself as far as my garden or my farm goes. I'm just not feeling like I'm an adequate gardener or that I just have what it takes to kind of share a garden or a farm you know so you kind of have that I, I don't know if it just comes with all gardeners I don't I don't think so I think some gardeners are just really self-confident in their garden and their skills um but I've even heard Monty Don say things like you know the things didn't go well or just had an excuse for you know something that hasn't gone right or um weeds have gotten away you know those kinds of things but I think all of us, you know, we strive for these beautiful, that our farm is spotless and that we are just totally in control. You know, all these things come to mind and when people come to our farm, sometimes I, or I try not to anymore, but I used to just be kind of really apologetic why something is the way it is. And I've learned to just not say anything at all anymore. I bite my tongue, which is really hard to do because, you know, of course there's things that have gone awry. And of course, you know, there's a, you know, a tray of seedlings that has been left and is just totally died and withered. And, you know, last year I didn't get certain plants in the ground and, you know, all these things. And I think that you can beat yourself up a little bit when you haven't done it so well or that you have kind of forgotten, um, you know, to, to plant out that tray of seedlings and they're dead. And so then we find excuses either to people or <laughs> to yourself of why you did what you did. So I've been really working on just, you know, not doing that so much just to kind of like, you know, 
it is what it is because I think it happens to all of us. Leave me a comment below if, if you know what I'm talking about here. I think we're just super hard on ourselves. But to have a, you know, a successful mindset is, you know what, there is a lot of things I did well. And I think that's why I do my end of the year kind of reflection is that, you know, yeah, of course there's always improvement. And yes, I maybe didn't do it so well in this area or that area or, or got all of the, you know, green beans in, or, you know, I forgot about, you know, some squash that were just left in the field. And now I'll probably have volunteers, you know, so there's things that like, oh, I need to do a better job with this, this and this, but then to also like say, you know what, I did really, really well. And I feel like, you know, spring, I nailed it. Winter or late fall, not so much but you know my mom was sick and you know it's just a time and a season and i have to give myself grace for that so anyways that is my rambling about you know having a healthy mindset and just it is what it is <laughs> not to have so many excuses for the way we've failed as gardeners um i don't know if you can relate because some people oh my god i look at their gardens i mean that's the other thing is you know you compare yourself right you compare yourself as a gardener and why can't i do it like this well everybody's circumstances are different and you know we're all building different lifestyles you know some people do gardens and and have beautiful flower gardens and and their circumstances are completely different than mine and I try and do a lot on the farm I do YouTube I do you know a cut flower production that's my job YouTube is just for fun you know we homestead which is for the family so we have all these things that go on and you know of course things fall through the cracks and of course um, I'm working on just keeping that healthy mindset and not you know making it so that I am just so hard on myself that I'm failing constantly right so anyways this is the year that I'm just gonna work on that a little bit but we're almost done seeding up all these sweet peas it's going really fast that's one thing I like about them super easy on the hands and you can just whip them right in and on they grow and they make you feel like you've just been so successful I mean that's one thing about sweet peas is that one year if I would have just thought I failed at sweet peas I'm not going to do this again um, then I wouldn't be where I am now where we grow these amazing sweet peas and they're beautiful and they they bring in a nice chunk of change <laughs> in spring, uh, late spring for us. And there's something I just absolutely love growing. So what we've found here on the farm is to actually put our compost and our fertilizer down deep. Because sweet peas have that long tap root that goes way down, we want to first get it planted in our little you know space and then the taproot will go down and then hit this really nice compost fertilizer soil mix that is you know six inches down or more and then that just gives it a spur on to grow really tall we get them huge and they get as tall as the ceiling in this greenhouse so we have a structure that can tolerate that which is the cattle panels and that holds everything really well together and then we take baling twine and twine them up usually once to twice a week we kind of go every third day running that baling twine and we've gotten really good at doing that we usually will cut then bale twine and then you know leave it a day or two cut bale twine leave it for two days or so anyways um when you have this many sweet peas it's a chore not gonna lie it is a chore um but it's beautiful so with sweet peas we want to start them in the house basically which is a really nice chore this time of year so you can i just get little mason jars the little jelly cups and i put my seed in there put the little tag on the outside of what it is and then i let them soak for about 24 hours after that then we take them and pop them into our trays which in my case i'm using those 72 cell trays which you're going to have that nice growing medium in them i take a pencil and i just put the pencil down down in the hole first making a little space for the little pea to go right down inside and then I get that covered up now it takes about 14 to 21 days to germinate uh, sometimes they're super fast I mean they can germinate literally faster than that but that that's on average and then you want the temperature to be about 55 to 65 degrees so kind of warmish and here in the greenhouse it stays hovering um, like we've been in about the 40s we're gonna dip down into the teens in the next three days so I'm gonna pop these actually into one of our grow rooms which we transform our cooler into just a grow room since it's insulated and we're not using it for flowers right now we put our 
grow lights and trays and everything like that and heat and it just works perfectly for us so we just kind of jump start it in there and we can control like mice pressure or bird pressure birds really like sweet peas so you want to be careful with that if you just have a little home uh, greenhouse and birds can get in or anything like that or mice a lot of times we're putting this is just a mesh tray that you can get at a garden center so if you find these I like the smaller holes like this because then mice have a harder time getting through and birds can't peck at your sweet peas so covering with this and then I just put a little pot over the top of it to weight it down um, because birds are tricky they can kind of lift things and move it to eat your sweet peas so you don't want that so after I've soaked my sweet peas for about 24 hours then I head in and I plant them out and it works like a charm every time so transplanting them it basically um, you want to do a quarter to a half inch deep into your tray um, usually i'm doing about a quarter down the way and again i'm just taking my pencil and going as fast as i can when you're seeding this many sweet peas then it's just you know going fast is key and then your sweet peas are going to be ready to plant out around four to six weeks after that so just be kind of watching um, when you warm up enough they can tolerate a light frost but um, we tend to wait a little bit to get them out into the area we're growing them the area we're growing is going to be a little bit sheltered and we are going to protect it with some um, leaves and different things like that and four to six weeks is gonna put us basically at the end of February, 1st of March. We've been super warm this year. And so that's when I'm planning on putting them out and it's gonna work perfectly. So you basically just wanna count back for your area. Now, at the time that we plant them out, generally I give them a couple days to get kind of settled into their new home and then I do some pinching. I have done some videos on pinching your sweet peas, but I'll try and show you here what I'm talking about on some of our other sweet peas that are growing already. So you wanna wait for your sweet pea tendril to get about six to eight inches and then you're gonna wanna pinch down and you wanna pinch down to the, the first set of leaves. I think that's how, I'll show you here, but um, cause it's kind of confusing. First set of leaves, you wanna pinch it out and I just use my fingers to do that with. You can take Take snips to them as well sometimes that works better if your hands don't work quite right but what that does is encourages branching and get a bushier fuller uh, sweet pea and that works great for like if you have a fence or you're trying to create a wind break or anything like that even though sweet peas don't really like a lot of wind they get tattered um, kind of the petals get a little um, damaged that way so you want to be a little careful with the wind but if you're using it as foliage and just you know something beautiful in the garden that you're not really picking you could use it as a wind break or just up some sort of gate or you know just a romantic look you know it's beautiful okay sweet peas prefer full sun um, I found that here we get a little bit hot in the summertime so in July we can you know end of June first of July we've gotten you know 117 before and my sweet peas survived and the only reason they survived is that they had some afternoon shade so I find that that actually works really really well if you live in a hotter climate and you want to keep that going that you have that morning sun afternoon shade but they do prefer full sun so we talked about support. Um, we use cattle panels. I haven't always used cattle panels. We have done this before where um, we've used the Horvanova netting. You can get that at Johnny's Seed or any supply store basically. We tended to go away from that because it isn't really recyclable and it's just plastic and I don't like that. So we went, as soon as I could afford it, I went to the cattle panels and we double stack them and it works really, really well. So you wanna plant your sweet peas about six inches apart. And um, sometimes we've been known to plant them a little bit closer than that, but on average, that's kind of what you wanna do. And it works out really, really well because they do, ours get massive. So I find that if you harvest the sweet peas when you have about half of the blooms open and half of them closed, that that really encourages um, them to keep coming and coming. It is considered a come and cut again. And uh, so we get loads and loads of blooms off this. When we first start cutting, we cut only the stem um, and they can be super long. They can be you know, two feet long sometimes, it's ridiculous. Beautiful in wedding work. But what we're kind of known for is cutting them on the vine. 
So we have these huge massive vines with the tendrils on it. We actually make a little bit more money on that than we do on just the single bloom. So that's kind of how we prefer to cut ours. We do them in a 10 stem bunch and they're just gorgeous. But if you're growing them in your garden, they are just beautiful to put into little mixed bouquets. You can just do a handful of them on your table of just blooms. It doesn't really matter about the stem length or anything like that. You just enjoy them. And I think they just look amazing, just kind of rambled through the garden. It definitely gives it that cottage garden feel really really stunning and especially some of the colors you'll have to see some of the colors we're planting today they're just they're just beautiful and of course like every single seed package or anything that you're seeding it says oh prefers sandy loom perfect soil so i have clay soil here and they grow amazing so i don't know i you know i don't have that sandy loom beautiful i do here in the greenhouse but not outside where I'm planting these. So every year they grow great. They just don't get as tall outside for me as they do here in the greenhouse. So part of it is that I'm growing in a greenhouse. You know, there's that. So one thing I have learned, you know, along with the, you know, afternoon shade is just to keep the roots kind of cool. Uh, so we use like a pl uh, the black plastic that you can have the holes in it. We do that here in the greenhouse because it does get kind of warm. But if you're outside, I do just mulch it with some, you know, basically I use some compost, a heavy compost. And again, they love that. So they do great. And that just kind of keeps the roots really nice and cool. And um, they, they love it. Some of the sweet peas that we grow don't get any water at all and they just go nuts. And so, you know, because they have that long tap root, I think they just tap into that water that's accessible to them around in that area. But I know that people have talked about growing sweet peas are really hard. Um, I think, you know, my first year I didn't succeed at it. And that brings me to my other point about being successful in the garden and keeping that successful mindset. But the thing that I thought about lately is just the fact that, you know, I didn't do it so well the first year. I, well, I did everything correct. I didn't, I grew only about a six foot section and I didn't like watch for bugs. I think bug pressure for the most part is slugs this time of year for us in the Pacific Northwest. We have a lot of water so slugs we have to put some slug bait down and then we get we can get aphids pretty pretty readily and I find now that if I do that compost slash fertilizer way down deep that our sweet peas do a lot better preventing having any of the bugs and basically for us that is the aphid and then also timing for the ladybugs if i order in some ladybugs i will do that some years we don't have any problems with aphids on them some years we do and it's just you know this year it's a little bit warm so i'm assuming we're going to have some problems but uh, fingers crossed we don't but just knowing a kind of some things that come along with growing sweet peas outdoor is completely different than indoors and the bug pressure is also different i find that indoors we kind of tend to have a little more pressure in the high tunnel here but outside we don't tend to have as much okay so that's kind of what i found the other thing you can have is powdery mildew and so using some sort of fungicide um, definitely use drip line tape because that will keep the moisture off the leaves growing outside you can't help mother nature that's just going to rain or do different things like that but i find again it's just i don't have a problem in inside here the greenhouse yeah i will and um so we keep fans going we keep it nice and dry the other thing we do during the season of growing sweet peas is i do do a fish emulsion um weak blend of a drench or i'll put it in a backpack sprayer and I use my compost tea maker to do that. And we spray the leaves before the flowers come on. And that really helps prevent some of these problems that arise like the aphids and the powdery mildew. So that is all my tips on growing some great sweet peas. So uh, I hope you do try some, especially if you're growing them outside. Let me know how it goes for you. If you have any favorites that you absolutely love, leave me a comment below. I'd love to hear from you. And uh, they're a really easy, easy flower to grow and very rewarding and smell amazing and you know have all the things to them very romantic cottage garden flower well from the greenhouse here at Crowley house <laughs> we uh, thank you for tagging along with us again this week as we are doing the simple planting of sweet peas and my chit chat about a successful mindset so leave me a comment below if you have any um, 
favorite sweet peas that you like to grow or have any tips or tricks for other folks that you want to pass on we'd love to hear from you down in the comments and if you haven't yet please subscribe and share like and do all the things we uh, love having folks that love to garden and uh, love family life homesteading all the things uh, tag along here at Crowley House okay until next time much success in all you do and grow and we'll be seeing you shortly back here at Crowley House very soon Bye-bye.